state of the proxy web applications, I believe that right now is the time when proxy web applications are about to get really popular. So the first movers have already built their applications and they are now getting traction and uh, all the different companies are realizing that what they could be getting from proxy web applications. So this started as a thought on having a perfect deployment model. In a way, you get to any web application just by sending a link. You click that link and you are in the application. So that's really quick compared to installing an application. But there are kind of doubts around that. Are those applications lower than native applications? Is hardware access and API access limited? Can you kind of build similar type of engagement, kind of pull your customers and users back to applications as easily? Is the user experience feeling like a second class citizen in any platform compared to native applications? Does it integrate with the operating system as well? So those were the questions that proxy web applications try to answer. And uh, just to define what is a proxy web application, here is a quick definition by Microsoft. I like this. It's a fairly extensive though. So first off, it's progressive, meaning that it works on any device and it works in a such way that you just load a web page and then you start adding new functionality on that web page and progressively turn that web page into a fully working application. It should be fast. It should be linkable. It should be responsive. It should be in a way that the same application can be run on anything between smartphone and a desktop computer. It should feel like an app in a way that uh, everything happens instantly. There is no page loads. It should work also on a less than optimal connectivity, even offline. And while it's a web application, you don't need to install. There should be option for that. So if you want to, after going to an application, you're going to keep that application, it will be great to be able to add that to your home screen or start menu or wherever you start your applications from. It should stay current it, by kind of uh, updating itself automatically. It should help to pull your users back to the application through notifications. You should find the application with web search. And if it's available on a App Store as well, there should be a way to rank it. So that's what Micro defines as a proxy web application. You don't necessarily need to have all of these at once, but this is what is possible with the proxy web application. So here's an example from Pinterest, they had a mobile web application before, and then they re-implemented that as a proxy web app. And what came out was that they were able to increase the engagement with their users by 60%. And this being a social media platform, that engagement is their lifeblood. And when they started comparing that to native application that they also had, they noticed that the engagements are pretty much on the same level. So that was, of course, game changing for them. Another example from Starbucks. So they implemented a mobile proxy web application for their users for ordering coffee in their cafeterias. That proxy web app was so easy to, to install it, so easy to get to just by sending a link or scanning a barcode that uh, it increased the app downloads by 94%. And that's obviously really impactful for them if you are able to double the daily active users just by implementing the proxy web app. Another example is from Uber. They have always had really well-made native mobile applications, but when they expanded to a market where networks were quite slow compared to, to other markets, as slow as even like 2G networks, uh, downloading that uh, hefty mobile application that kind of became a barrier of entry. So they implemented a proxy web application where the size of the download was just 50 kilobytes. So that was so drastically small that that allowed them to enter to that market because this is just a small fraction compared to the native mobile application. So a bit of history in here. This uh, term PWA that was defined by Google in 2015. So this was coming out of the hurdle for seeing people dropping from kind of hearing about the application to actually going to App Store, installing it and starting to use it. So there were so many steps they wanted to kind of uh, use the zero effort installation 
of uh, web and uh, use that deployment model, but keep the native like, user experience of the native applications. And at the same time, this kind of uh, gave a benefit of running the same application on every platform. So write that code base once and run it on every platform. So the promise is really powerful. So that was first implemented in Android 17. And then Microsoft noticed that they don't have a sizable ecosystem for their mobile platform. So they jumped on board and fully implemented proxy web apps for themselves as well. First for Windows and then added also Windows Store support for it. And later on, I guess as a testament to scale of PWAs, uh, Microsoft started building Office piece by piece on Proxy Web Apps in 19. So now we had two major platforms in there, Android and Microsoft. And later in 19, Google made uh, Chrome allow any desktop-oriented platform like Windows, or Linux, and Mac to be able to run those Proxy Web Apps on desktops as well uh, through Chrome. And Apple implemented the core technologies in Proxy Web App. So that basically got all the platforms together so write this application once and you are able to run that on any of these platforms. So with this, we believe that this 2020 is the year of Proxy Web Apps, where most of the business apps that are started this year will be written as Proxy Web Apps instead of native applications. A couple of examples. Here is the Microsoft Office, the Proxy Web App version of the Microsoft Office that comes pre-installed with every laptop you buy today and also an Outlook, how that looks like in, in there. Here is a Spotify re-implemented as Proxy Web App. So that gave full desktop experience as a PWA, but it also made it possible to run this application basically inside anything running on web. So you could kind of uh, embed that to a, a web page or send a playlist in a messaging application or on social media. So that kind of uh, enabled a lot of new things for Spotify. Here is Autodesk, two of their CAD applications. So the AutoCAD viewer is basically the viewing part of the AutoCAD. And the interesting part is that this is really kind of running the, the original AutoCAD code base, but they are able to kind of port that to web. And uh, another uh, application here is uh, more of a hobbyist uh, CAD or a Tinkercad from the same company. That's a full-blown CAD application. So this kind of demonstrates that there is no limit how extensive business application you build on web. So basically anything is possible. PWAs are actually quite simple under the hood. You just need two things. First of you need to have a manifest that defines what's the name of your application, how the icon looks like, and a couple of basic properties, you declare those. And the second part is uh, what is called service worker. So this defines how network is managed, including uh, enables offline functionality. And this is just a few lines of JavaScript. So basically any web page that adds these two things could be said to be a proxy web app. Of course, at that point, it doesn't really include all the features that the Microsoft definition over there listed. There is an interesting project called Project Fugu. So this is a joint project between browser vendors for implementing all the most useful native APIs for web one by one. So if you are wondering if any of the kind of APIs that you have needed from native platforms uh, are still missing from web, this is a perfect project to take a look and see what's the state of those and when they are landing on each different browser. Uh, here's one example from those APIs. So this is Vardin's lab experiment where we tried to see what can be built on top of a uh, file system API. So in here, the left side, this is web-based uh, IDE, basic VS code. And uh, over there, you have your project on a local disk. So over here, we send a link to a colleague, Alice, over there. And the Alice uh, is able to tap into Bob's file system and collaborate in real time, editing Bob's files in his IDE. So this kind of a uh, showcase how vastly different use cases can be built by tapping to these APIs. This is just an experiment, but you can find many other experiments at uh, vadi.com slash labs. 
another interesting technology in proxy web apps and web in general is called web assembly so this is a way to take almost any existing code base whether that's written in php or rust or c and compile that with the traditional compiler to web assembly binary and that can be today run on any major web browser so this way you can port almost any applications to web and the performance is comparable to native performance so this is actually a really exciting way of bringing your old uh, code bases to web to summarize, when comparing to regular web applications, uh, native mobile applications or proxy web applications, the main benefit of proxy web apps and regular web apps is that you only write your code base once and you run that on any platform. But what uh, proxy web apps bring on board is that you get most of the benefits of the native mobile applications as well. So basically kind of best of both worlds. Where the gap is today is that while app stores for Android and Windows are supported, uh, iOS app store doesn't yet uh, support uh, distributing proxy web apps in there. So in order to distribute your proxy web app in iOS app store, you have to still wrap that with Cordova. Hopefully this goes away, but that's the situation today. So at Vardin, we've been supporting this trend for quite a while. So any Vardin application you could just add at PWA annotation in there and it turns itself to a proxy web application just by writing that one word. You can also implement offline functionality and uh, we have uh, in the most recent release in Vardin 15 also enabled writing views on the client side uh, with TypeScript. So this is something that uh, make building those offline capabilities more easy. So what we're working next is uh, simplifying the offline support even further and also adding push notifications. So if you want to try out what the Vardin based project web app looks like, try uh, that uh, task mob demo on, on our front page. It kind of showcases some of the capabilities of project web apps.